start reading uh, Amos chapter 3, verse 1. And it says, listen to this word which Adonai has spoken against you, people of Israel against the entire family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. Now, I want to do something here real quickly, and then we'll go back to normal flow on the reading of the verses. Let's jump down to verse 7 real quick, because verse 7 is a commonly used verse and quoted verse when we people start talking about prophecy and everybody, you know, starts prophesying things that are going to happen or things that they want to happen. Um, I'll get to that saying, but read verse seven. It says, Adonai, God does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. Now they'll cherry pick that verse. A lot of people will cherry pick that verse and use it. Okay. To prophesy things that are going to come, especially if they want to prophesy good things and things that are uh, God's about to do. And he's going to turn this whole thing around and everything else. Um, and I want to, I want to uh, show you that if you read this in context, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with how people use this verse to start prophesying things uh, to make them popular or make them, make them look good or just things that they want to see happen. And let me, let me say this, uh, last year, and I probably should have started this way mm -hmm. last year in 2019, around this time, there were all kinds of people prophesying and they were saying 2020 was going to be the year of clear vision, yeah. clear vision. And, and, and your vision, the, the vision that God has given you is going to come to pass. 2020 was supposed to be this year of clear vision, prosperity, unlike the church had ever seen or this country had ever seen. And they were prophesying and, and go back, look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. Okay. But people were prophesying all kinds of really big frivolous, you know, this was the year of the Mercedes Benz for your life and your driveway and God's going to bless you more than ever. This is my year, my time, my season. And guess what? 90 days into your time, your year and your season, all of us got punched in the mouth. Yes, we did. And right now we are still on the bottom of the octagon with 2020 on top of us, ground and pounding, beating the living daylights out of us. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're. We have got it. We're still getting it. Okay. There was a bombing in Nashville um, on early Christmas morning. And I'll get to that in just a second. But we are still getting it. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is this. First of all, stop prophesying, which is, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? It is um, really new age really demonic garbage. Mm -hmm. It's called the, the law of attraction. When you start to prophesy things that you want to see, yes. to call them and bring them into your, into your vicinity, into your life, into your realm, that the things you speak and say um, are going to come within your, your perimeter, your life, your force and all of this and the things that God has for you. And if you speak negative, negative things will gravitate towards you. And if you speak positive, positive things will gravitate towards you. That is demonic. Yes. Same and way. it has nothing to do with God's word. You cannot find that in scripture. Okay. I'll get back to Amos three in a second. Some of you are saying, I know. What about Amos three? I'll get there in a second. <laughs> you have got to stop believing that kind of garbage because there is nothing in God's word that says if you say it, you'll have it. Okay. There's nothing that's there. People want to go to the verse uh, with Abraham that he said that in Hebrews, it says that he called things that be not as though they were. Yes. Let me put that in context for you. It did not mean, it does not mean that Abraham had the idea of saying, you know what? I want to have a baby with Sarah. So I'm just going to speak it into existence. It's not what he did. It's not what he did. What he did was God had already spoken. Yes. Are you all with me? Yes. God had already spoken what he was going to do. 
And all Abraham was doing was putting himself in agreement with it. Yes. But you cannot, and watch me here, you cannot speak what you want to have and then hope that God will come into agreement oh, with it. That's good. That's not how it works. That's satanic. That's witchcraft. You cannot speak it and then ask God to get on board. You've got to find out what God is speaking and then get on board with it. Yes. Okay. And what Abraham was doing when he was calling things that be not as though they were, is he was trying to put faith in what God had said, yes. because he's thinking to himself, oh my gosh, I'm a hundred million years old. And so is Sarah. <laughs> we are, we are big time old and we can't even, it's not even physically possible for us to have a baby, but God said it. And if he said it, I guess he's going to do it. I got to get my brain thinking the way God thinks. I got to get my brain in line with what God has already said. But you cannot say what you want to have, what you want to see happen. You can't prophesy, this is my year. This is my uh, season. This is my time. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be highly favored. I'm going to do all of these things. And then say, God, come on, jump on this bandwagon with me. I know you can do it. I believe you can make what I want to happen come to pass. That's right. That's not how it works. Once again, that's witchcraft. It's soothsaying. It is the law of attraction. It is big time new age. Okay. It has nothing to do with scripture. It is vastly out of context. All right. Yes. So we've got to stop doing that. And you might say, well, Pastor David, how do we know that you're right? Because this year. Yes. Because of, the, of this year. Yeah. Do you need more proof that what you want and prophesying it and believing it and thank you, hallelujah, Jesus and speaking in tongues doesn't make it happen. You, a lot of people prophesied things, said things, and none of it. There are people I know personally who were last year this time saying this is going to be their greatest year ever. And right now they're saying it is the worst year of their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Did God abandon you or were you wrong? And I'm not trying to be hard here, guys. What I'm trying to say is we've got to repent from that stuff. Mm -hmm. If we want God to be on our side. We have got to repent from those things and we've got to start asking God, what, what are you saying? Okay. Yeah. And what can I do to get on board? Yeah. I want to be on board with what you're saying is going to happen. All right. Mm -hmm. Get to more of that in a second. I want to jump back to Amos because when we're talking about what is God saying, people use this verse. Adonai, God reveals nothing without revealing it to his servants and his prophets. They say that and then they prophesy law of attraction stuff and yeah. what they want to see happen, what they want to see come to pass. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's read this in context because it's so amazing how much revelation you get when you read the Bible in contact in context. Don't cherry pick one verse out to make it say what you want it to say. That's right. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Now back up. Remember how we started this chapter. Listen to this word, which Adonai has spoken against you. All of a sudden, verse seven is not positive anymore. Yeah. It's not. He has spoken against you, you people of Israel, against the entire family that he brought up out of the land of Egypt. Of all the families on the earth, only you have intimately known. This is why I will punish you for all your crimes. All of a sudden, verse seven isn't goosebumps, Holy Ghost anointing anymore, is it? Yes. And now all of a sudden... We got a different flavor going on here, yes. okay? It ain't sugar, this is pepper, all right? This is some spicy stuff. This is hot sauce here. God is not happy, he's not pleased. He says this in verse three, do two people travel together with having, without having so agreed? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion growl in his lair if it has caught nothing? Does a bird get caught in a trap on the ground if it hasn't been baited? Does a trap spring up from the ground when it has taken nothing? When the shofar is blown in the city, don't the people tremble? Can a disaster befall a city without Adonai's having done it? Adonai, 
God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? Adonai, God has spoken. Who will not prophesy? What does it, what, I'm, what did it just say there? Adonai, God has spoken. Yes. Who will not prophesy? Yes. Because you can't prophesy on your own behalf. You only echo what heaven has already declared. Yes. And you can't make up what heaven has declared because it fits your narrative. If we do that as a church, we are just like the mainstream media that has been playing the American. And I'll get to this in a second, too. That's been playing the American public. All right. And telling them lies and pulling the wool over their eyes. All right. We cannot operate that way. We can't prophesy it and then say God has spoken it. We have to find out what God has spoken and then prophesy. You know what that means there to do? It means to declare what the Lord has said. That's right. Okay. The thing is, we've got to find out what he has properly said. Yes. The narrative we want to fit is, it's all going to be good. We want to say 2021 is going to be better. Why do we want to say that? I want to say that. Okay. Yeah. Why do we want to say that? Because 2020 punched us in the mouth. Okay, it hit us hard and it's still hitting us. We want 2021 to be better. All right. So it's easy to say, oh, we just we're just going to believe it's going to be better. We're going to believe it's, we don't know that. Okay, we got to find out what God is saying. Get back to that in a second. Verse eight, the lion is word who will not fear. Adonai has spoken who will not prophesy. Verse nine, proclaim it on the palaces in Ashad and on the palaces in the land of Egypt. Say, assemble yourselves in the hills of Shamran. See what great uh, torment is seething within it. How much oppression is being done there. For they don't know how to do it right, says Adonai. They store up violence and robbery in the palaces. Therefore, here is what Adonai Elohim says. An enemy will surround the land. And he will str strip you of your strength and plunder your palaces. This is all of a sudden even more so. Not how we use Amos 3.7 than we ever thought it was. Now what's being prophesied is, guess what? If you thought it was bad, you're about to get punched in the mouth again, right? That's what's happening here, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a second. I'm not saying that's what happened now, but give me a second here, all right? Verse 12, this is what Adonai says. As a shepherd rescues from the mouth of the lion, a couple of leg bones or a piece of an ear. So the people of Israel, Shamron, will be rescued, huddled under cushions and corners in their beds. Hear and testify against the house of Yaakov, says Adonai. Elohim, Elohei, uh, Tizwab. When I punish Israel's crimes, I will also punish the altars of Bethel. The horns of the altar will be cut off and they will have fallen to the ground. I will tear down winter houses as well as summer houses. Houses adorned with ivory will be destroyed. The mansions will be no more, says Adonai. Mm -hmm. As if I had to read the whole chapter. But verse 7 of Amos 3 is basically saying, I've already told my prophets what's going to happen. It's about the hammer's about to get dropped. You're about to get punched in the mouth. I'm about to judge Israel. So when we pull Amos 7 out and start prophesying good stuff and all of this, this is your year in 2020 vision and everything else. And I heard it done a million times last year. Mm -hmm. Like every preacher I heard almost was prophesying this stuff. All right. Um, you know, and, and now look where we are. And they pulled it out of a context of scripture in which none of that other stuff, all the good and freely and feel good stuff is even in there. All right. So it's out of context and they did it. They did it because let's just be honest. It sells. Mm -hmm. It makes good videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes people feel good. Mm -hmm. And it makes people want to listen to their broadcasts and their sermons and buy their books. Mm -hmm. All right. I wonder if anybody had actually been listening to God and God spoke to them and said, prepare yourself. For thouest is about to get this, thy buttest kicketh. <laughs> if they would have prophesied that. Okay. I don't know. There's some guys out there that, you know, gals that would probably, they've got the guts to say exactly what God is saying. 
All right. Um, all of that being said, let me jump into where we are right now. More than ever, probably in recent history, people are going to want to get on uh, Facebook and say, I'm just going to believe that the year 2021 is going to be what the year 2020 should have been. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be this is this is I, I made a mistake last year. This is my year coming up, 2021. Let me urge you to be careful with this law of attraction. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is there needs to be repentance in the church for trying to get God to be our genie in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's not prophesy a word and ask God to get on board. Right. Let's find out what God is saying and get on board with that because there's success when you get on board with what God is saying. <laughs> if we want to rewind time and go back and say, what would God have said to us if we were listening in the year 2019 for the year 2020? He would have been saying to us, this is what it would have sounded like, a real prophecy. Prepare your hearts because trouble is coming. Mm -hmm. Repent from your wicked and evil ways. Bring your heart close to me. Seek my face. Get into my word. Establish yourself in your faith like you have never done before. You need to know more of my word than you ever have before. And then you would have heard maybe, a, and thus says the Lord, cling to the truth because deception and lies are about to abound. Hold on to the truth. And thus saith the Lord, do not be afraid. Okay? If you put your hope and your trust in me, then you will be okay. You may have hard times ahead, but you're going to make it. Okay? And you're going to get through it if you put your hope and your faith and your trust in me. All right? Don't cling to the ways of the world. Don't listen to men, but listen to my voice. Seek me like never before. That would have been a proper, I have really heard the voice of God prophecy in 2019 for 2020. Now, I was one of a few people that last year were saying, you know, we need to repent. And we need to seek God and we need to do these things. And I'm not saying it because say, I want to say I'm right. And to be honest with you, I probably should say that I am sorry for not saying more. 2019, my wife and I both were saying, uh, and, it, and nobody really listened to us because it's just not popular and it doesn't sell and nobody wants to hear it. In 2019, and a few of you in here, uh, we'll probably remember this, but we were saying uh, the Lord had given us some dreams and that something huge was going to happen in 2020 and that we needed to get ready and we needed to seek God. We didn't know what it was. This is even in October of last year of 2019. We were saying something. My wife had had dreams that something huge, something big was going to take place in 2020. The Lord showed me that it was going to change the face of everything we knew. And I didn't, and I literally said that, that the world would never be the same after this took place. All right. Didn't know what it was, but I knew that it in my spirit didn't feel good. All right. It didn't, it felt like a, whoa, Nelly batting down the hatches, you know, board up the windows, a storm is coming. And that was pretty much what we said. Okay, that a storm was coming, something big was going to happen, and the world would never be the same. We got, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, we've got that on video. Okay, and that video maybe had 30 or 40 views. Everybody else was watching the videos that said, This is your year, it's 2020 vision. God's going to bless you like never before. Hallelujah. That was the, that was the videos everybody looked to. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's the big guys will be the ones they look to now. But let me tell you 
something right now. We, we are only, we, we're, we're getting ready to start seeing some even more things. Okay, let me just, I don't know what it is. And if I, what I was going to say before was this, that if I would be honest with you, I should maybe repent for not sharing more of what I thought was going to happen in 2020 and to prepare because I didn't want to be that doom and gloom guy. That's not fun. Okay. Jeremiah had the responsibility to prophesy to a nation to repent while they had prostitutes in the temple and nobody listened to him. He was by himself. He was, he, he did not have fun. <laughs> okay. It's not fun being those people. All right. So let me say this. All right. We just saw Christmas morning, early morning, an RV blow up in downtown Nashville in front of the AT&T building. All right. Now, there are a lot of news sources that are saying, okay, that the, um, the machines, the voting machines, and I'm trying to remember the name of them, the, the, the Dominion. Dominion voting machines that were going to be forensically investigated or whatever else um, that were brought from some of the, the swing states were put in the AT&T building. All right. And so in order to uh, thwart that entire investi investigation and find any voter fraud from these Dominion machines, they decided they decided to blow up the building or put a bomb in front of the building where they were, all right, to destroy them or whatever else to thwart or to completely stop this investigation. Now, here's the deal. There are going to be a lot of people who say that's fake news, but there's a lot of news sources that have already confirmed that that was there. The mainstream media is going to lie. And a lot of people are going to buy into that lie. I'm not here to talk about all that. What I want to tell you is, do you hear what I'm saying right now? That we're even having this conversation should tell you the state of the world and our country. That we're even going to have, that other people are even, even going to have an argument over that. That tells you where we are. So whether you want to believe it or not, should at least tell you we're in a mess. Mm -hmm. We are in a big mess. Okay. And whether you want to believe it or not, this election was never about Trump. It was never about an election. It was never about Democrats and Republicans. This whole thing is much bigger than that. And really what it is, is it, it is an attack, and I've been saying this for years, okay, and I was a conspiracy theorist, all right, but it's an attack on basically what you come down to as being biblical beliefs, conservative, you want to say conservative values, that's fine, but biblical beliefs, Christian beliefs, okay, what we hold to be true, okay, the value of life, um, the stuff that's coming out, I don't even want to say from the Democrats or the left, okay, or just from people, all right, that want to do things like legalize um, child sex, all right? We're having these conversations because that is where the world is headed. And there is a tremendous battle taking place right now of evil in this country, and people who are clinging, uh, us deplorables who are clinging to their guns and their Bibles and their conservative values. What I mean by conservative values, the fact that we don't believe that sex with children is right. Right. Okay. The fact that we don't believe that legalizing of hardcore drugs like cocaine is right. The fact that, uh, you know, we don't believe that legalizing prostitution should happen. The fact that we... Uh, want to see the truth come out on like child sex trafficking and so on and so forth and 
The fact that we believe that none of this stuff is right and that we believe in truth, that we believe in morality, that we believe in. I mean, you could go on and on and on with the lists of things that we believe. That's what the war is against. This war is against. I mean, it's good and evil. It really is. That's what we are up against. And this nation we just saw. And, and I'll tell you what I believe. We just saw a complete political coup that took this nation over mm-hmm. for the purpose of propagating and making laws that make all of the things that I just talked about right and legal. Okay. And it will get worse in regards to that. All right. This is not going to go away. If Trump somehow squeezes out an 11th hour victory on January the 6th, and he remains the president of this country, we are not in the clear. Okay. We are not in the clear, not by any stretch of the imagination. So let me back up again to this whole idea about, and I'm almost done guys, but let me back up again to this whole idea about prophesying and speaking things into an existence that, uh, you know, like this is my year. This is my season, my time, my, 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 okay. What in the world do you not understand that if you think that way, That you are just as deceived as the rest of these people because your focus for a new year is not what does God want in my life? What is God saying in, in my life? What is God saying to this world? What is God saying to his people? And let me get on board with that. We're focused on my life and my job and my finances and what my and what my mama my, my, my what do I want to see happen for me and then I'm going to law of attraction speak that into an existence and hope God gets on board with it do you not understand that that is just as deceived as people who want you know prostitution and child pornography to be made legal okay Why? Because it's focused on you. It's focused on you and all of those people that want all of these things. They're focused on satisfying themselves. This is about satisfying the flesh and not satisfying God. That's the dividing line right there. Okay. And if we're thinking about me, me, me and my, 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 and my year and my season and my time. Okay. What if we started thinking about God, what is The season you're calling us to. A season of repentance. From what? From me, 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 my, my, my. And our focus on God and saying it's not what I want. And we start having the heart of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but your will be done. And if that means there are hard times ahead, then strengthen us. Okay? Because Jesus didn't tell people to build their house on the rock in case storms came. He told them to build their house on the rock because the storms were most definitely coming. All right. And if we think that all of a sudden in 2021, it's just going to pop up daisies and roses and everything's going to be fine. We're, we're sadly mistaken. Jesus said in the last days, there would be tough times. All right. And we're seeing them. When are people going to stop looking for pie in the sky, realize the season and the times that we live in and start seeking God and saying, forgive me, change my heart, change my mind. How can I serve other people? How can I help other people? What can I do to please you? What is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to change? And let me tell you something. I don't think God's first thing on the list of priority is for you to lose 25 pounds by March. I just don't think it is. I think it's much deeper than that. And it's much more serious than that. There are a lot more things at stake on whether or not you can fit into a bathing suit by April. To look good at the pool. Dear God, help us all. Okay? Because that is not where we are. That should not be our New Year's resolution. All right? We have got to start looking at where do I stand with God? All right?
It's not about whether or not we get everything right and everything settles down so I can go on that trip to Hawaii I've been believing God for. We're missing the boat. And I'm telling you, I'm going to sound like the bad guy. I sounded like a weirdo last year when I didn't prophesy good things for 2020. But I said something big was going to happen. We need to get ready. Yes. Okay. Yes. I was a weirdo. And let me tell you, I guess I'm the weirdo now because I'm telling you, it's not going to get easier. Okay. It's not going to get easier. That's just not what, where we are right now. All right. So we got to stop thinking about trips to, to the beach, fitting in bathing suits and buying new cars and start asking God, what is his will for our life? And what do we need to do? And show me where I need to repent. Let's find out what God is saying and get on board with that. Instead of saying what we want to have happen and asking God to get on board with it. All right. So what do we do then? What are we supposed to do if we can't believe in all the good stuff? You still believe in good stuff, but you believe in a good God. Yes. <laughs> That's what you believe in. You believe in that no matter what the world is going through. My God will sustain me. Right. No matter what happens in the world, if I stand for truth, my God will be with me. Yes. Are you all with me? Yes. Okay. Psalms 121 verse 1. This is what you want. This is what you want to do. And I'm not even prophesying it. I'm saying what God has already said. Okay? And it's in context. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. If I raise my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from Adonai, Amen. the maker of heaven and earth. Yes. He will not let your foot slip. Your guardian is not asleep. No, the guardian of Israel never slumbers <laughs> and he never sleeps. Adonai is your guardian. At your right hand, Adonai provides you with shade. The sun can strike you during the day or even the moon at night. Adonai will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. Adonai will guard your coming and your going from now on and forever. If provided, we give our lives to him. Yes. And we put our faith in him. Yes. And we do not put our faith in men prophesying things we want to hear. Good stuff. If we don't put our faith in our own words of speaking things out into the atmosphere, hoping we will draw them to us. Okay. God's not looking for prophets. He's looking for people who put their trust in him mm -hmm. through all things. Why would... Trust be required if everything is good. Right. I'm going to have to trust God through some things that don't look good. But he promises me he is where my help comes from. Mm -hmm. That he will not let my foot slip. That he will guard me. That he will guard my life. That he will guard my coming and my going. If I put my trust in him. If I put my hope in him. If I serve him. If I am about him and not myself. If I lend my ear to his voice. And not men's voices saying what I want to hear. My own voice saying what I want to hear. Okay. But if I find out what he is saying. And say wow that sounds rough. But I put my trust in you. Okay, I put my trust in you. All right. That is where that is where a great revival will come from. And let me tell you something. And I've said this before. A lot of times. We think that the good things and if good times start happening and, you know, and it just all becomes rose petal walk in the garden. People are not going to turn their hearts to God in that moment. And God knows it. It's human nature for them to begin to call on him when they're in their biggest moments of trouble. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be just like God? <laughs> Are you all with me today? Wouldn't it be just like God for him to let trouble happen so he can save people's souls? Mm -hmm. Didn't he use death yes. in his son to accomplish eternal life? Are you guys with me? Yeah.
Because we ask God for things to be better. But we never ask God to change us. And what God really wants to do is change you. And so he brings trouble or he lets trouble come to you, hoping you will finally turn your heart to him and say, I can't do this anymore on my own. And we start declaring him our help, a very present help in time of need. And that we start fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We stop trying to prophesy our own future and we give our lives completely over to him. We stop listening to men and hope what they say is true. And we start listening to God and we know that what he says is true, that it's truth and that it's life. And that no matter what we see or no matter what we experience or no matter what comes our way, that our hope is in him and he will not let us fail and he will not let us fall. Are y'all with me today? This is where our hearts need to be looking into the next year is not saying we know what's going to happen and we know that this is what we want. And so therefore it will happen. We need to look in and we need to say, God, it may get worse. 2020 may be more punches in the mouth, but I know in whom I have believed. My faith and my hope is in Jesus and into him. I fix my eyes. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. I look to him in every situation. So no, it doesn't matter what 2021 brings. Let it happen. Bring it. Because my God is able. That's what our hearts need to be. That's where we need to be at. Okay, yeah, that's where we and if we happen to lose 20 pounds by April, then praise God. (laughs) Are you all with me? If you happen to get a raise on your job, then hallelujah, you know where it came from. But don't prophesy that stuff for it to come. Just wait and see if God does it. And if he does, then praise him for it. Right. I got to stop.